<laughs> Hello world. So I almost had, so what I think I'm trying to do, I don't know, I'm trying to figure, oh. Hello world. That's pleasant. Uh, all right, the lights, I just need to make sure the light's okay. Cause I got, there's windows and there's cross light and it's all different colors and like all this jazz. Okay, we're fine. Um, I do need to get that out of the way so I can see the whole thing. Stand by. I totally could have done that prior to, you know, actually starting. Is that bad? Hang on a second. Just realized. Oh, okay. No, no, no. We're good. Ooh. Look at that. You can see the corner of the green screen right there. We want to make that go away. Uh, yeah, let's push that all over there. Okay, that's cool. Um, <laughs> hello world. All right. Now let's start. Uh, yeah, so what I was thinking, I would do, so here's a funny thing. Like, so working on this digital garden, right? Working on my, my site, working on my garden. I really kind of like working on my garden. Yeah, the text looks okay. Cool. Okay. So spend a bunch of time, obviously, if you watched the stream last night, you saw messed around with a bunch. Um, I'm really liking where the design's at. It's like, it's funny though. Cause I look at like, uh Oh, uh, I look at other people's sites. Oh, wait, that's Twitch. I didn't mean to go to Twitch. I was trying to go to Twitter to see if I could bounce to his website. Oh, look at all these. See, I need to do all this stuff. Vlog, here we go. So like, I look at like these designs and like, it's all cool and colorful, but like, I don't know how to do that stuff. <laughs> so I'm just like, I'm just gonna do black text on a white background. And I, what I should do, uh, I think one of the things I'm gonna do actually is let people control the colors of the site. Um, and mess with a little bit. I just took a shower and these things are, my ears are just a little wet. Sorry about that. Um, that was gross. I don't know why I said that out loud. I could have just done it and not said anything about it. Um, it wasn't gross, but like whatever. Uh, but yeah, I was thinking I might let people like configure the color schemes. Like I definitely want to do it like for font size so that you can blow stuff up a little bit. Even though I don't know how much people actually use that. Oh, I should probably turn that down. That's trying to go through. Um, But yeah, so what I should do, and actually I think, so let me see if I got this now, posts. Nope, that is not the right thing to do. Posts, sorry that, is that gonna work? There we go. Oh wait, now why didn't, so I don't really, I'm not really gonna have a list of like a chronological list. Um, that's one of the things I was taking off. Oh, here's a list of posts and posts. Okay, here we go. Um, I'm on, that's literally the page I'm on that I clicked on. There's ideas. That's actually live. Yeah, okay, so I don't know. I'm still trying to figure all this stuff out and like how I want to do it um, and what's going to go where and all that stuff, right? Um, but the first thing I think I want to do, so I'm going to, I'm going to work on building like a little CMS for this right now. Cause I used to have, so like right now, if I make a new tab, nothing comes up. It says it can't connect to the server. I have a local host running, but obviously it's not actually running. So there's a software update or a system update on the Mac the other night. And ever since then my MAMP stuff hasn't worked. And like my MAMP version's like two versions back. But I've been thinking about making this Django site for a while to, to replace my little launch pad. Uh, so I'm I'm not going to worry about fixing the Mac, the MAMP stuff. I'm going to just do the Django stuff. So that's part of what I'm going to mess around with today. Um, and the other thing is I th I'm definitely going to mess around with the site a little bit too. Because um, I'm still thinking through... 
like the different ways of navigating it and like so I kind of like I think what I'm going to end up doing is in this area um putting just like a little hello world thing and then having a few of these things in here as well some links or stuff or maybe just like straight down i don't know i'm still trying to think about what i want to do with it um but one of the things i do know that i want to do so like i really like the look of these spaced out with like it feels like a kind of like a note card to me this one's a little tight um and like this one's probably long or whatever, but like I like I like these like card looks of it. Um, like that's a pretty good example. Uh, it feels just like a note card, and I used to like write note cards and do stuff with them. Um, trick is it doesn't have a date on it, and one reason that I don't have a date on it is because I was just didn't like I I kind of was experimenting with dropping everything uh, and then seeing what would happen, and I really like the look of this, but I you do kind of need well it would be. I do want to get a date on there because um, you want some amount of context for what this is. But I was just thinking about the design stuff and I was like, do you put it up here? Do you put it down here? Do you like, so it would be, I guess one thing that might be neat, but like you'd have to deal with the different sizes would be if you could have it like, you know, here, neat and gray or whatever. Um, but where I ended up, because I like, I want the border being the border, and I don't really want to push. Well, actually, I guess I should look at it. Um, I well, I, anyways, I think it's gonna end up over here. Um, but I guess I should look at it. So yeah, let's mess around with that for a minute. So the, we'll we'll get to the Django stuff, but I, I'm still I'm still playing with this. Obviously, where's VS Code? There it is. Uh, so. Let's find, okay, I'm gonna close out some of this stuff. Probably need that open, post HTML. Yeah, I had to make some new templates to do the lists. Summary, that's cool. Title, cool. All right, so here's single. All right, so this would be the first thing. So this is the first, this cell. I know they're not cells, but whatever. Uh, and then this is where the content goes. So what I wanna see is Padding top is 10, because I want to have the padding be the same for the top, because I want to push it down. All right, so padding top is 10, and then padding X, because I want to keep that, so that it was at three all the way around. So I want to keep the, the X dimension at three, but I want to push down the rest of it to there um, and probably a little bit more. So let's let's just put it there. And so the other thing I was thinking about with the dates that made it that made me less. Um, I think it's already on P. Um, that made me less, you know, icky about it is oh why is that see visual studio like i don't like the way that it is auto complete stuff is a little aggressive i'll get used to it eventually but like it it doesn't look to see if there actually is already a closed tab so like if i copy this well here watch this uh yeah so if i copy this because i want to move it here it adds another p tag, even though I copied and pasted that specific thing. Like, don't do that. That's not helpful. That burn. That's burned me a hundred. See, I just did it again. Oh, whoa! Did it do it on undo even? Okay, so blah 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 blah. 
surely it didn't do it on undo, undo. So if I cut and paste, it's there. So if I undo, oh, and the undo actually took it away. There's an undo, there's an undo. It adds it on an undo. Okay, that's poor. <laughs> like that's not good. Um, all right, so here's, okay, so let's, Uh, I've been thinking about trying to do this. I'm not sure if this is going to work or not, but we'll, we'll clip one out. So whatever. Um, we're just like, I'm going to start making like videos of whatever. What I consider bugs and tricky things. So like, all right, start. Uh, okay. So. Here is a trick, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. So this is something that I think is problematic with Visual Studio Code. If I cut this paragraph tag and paste it here, even though there's already a closed tag, it adds one. You can kind of deal with that. But if I undo the first time, it takes it off. But if I undo again, it moves it back in place, but then it adds another closed paragraph tag. So even though I undo back, undid back to where I originally started, my code's different. That I think is something that should be addressed. Like that's not a good mental map. So there you go. Uh, feature request, possible bug, Whichever way you want to call it, I, th I think that's problematic. So thanks. See ya. Oh, and now what I should do is mark down a time of when that is. So let's do this. Uh, I'm going to make a new post. HN is for Hugo New. And then issue with VS Code. Auto complete on undo. So look at stream on there. So that's whatever. That'll show me a thing to do. Um, Oh, it opened. Oh, yes, it opens the page. That's good. That still works. So I've got some things that still work because they're command line stuff or whatever. Uh, and then some stuff like that tries to send over to the web server and the web server isn't there. Um, so I forgot that that one actually works, which is cool. So that's the page I just made. Um, all right. I want to start doing more of that stuff to just kind of like and I want, and so the other trick is like, I need it to be quick, right? So the, the bummer about that. Oh, I wonder if there's a way, I'll bet there's a way to auto clip that. Well, so one, I could probably clip that out of Twitch, couldn't I? How do you, how do you clip in Twitch? I'm going to go down a rabbit hole here. Well, that looks cool. I thought that said. Freddy Krueger for a split second, and I was like, Jason, Jason. Oh, that's the wrong thing. Uh, channel. It's gonna do the thing. How do you clip? Clip in Twitch. How to clip in Twitch. Tap on the screen. Share icon. Is this share icon? Share icon. Copy URL. Copied. Okay, that didn't help. Report myself. That seems like a bad idea. Edit. Oh, that's me. Oh, music. Oh, browse eSport. Okay, no, no, no. Um, Settings, clip, there we go. I should, 
probably do this on not the same screen. Oh, you can only go back that far. What I'm trying to do is make this as easy as possible to deal with. Um, all right, so let's do that one more time. How about that? And the other trick is do clips stay around? Now that we know how to do it. Uh... Uh, Alright, uh, hello to the Visual Studio Code team. Got a uh, feature request here for you. So autocomplete there is great for auto-closing the paragraph tag. Um, what I'm not a fan of is if I cut this paragraph tag and I paste it, it auto completes again, even though I explicitly just like if I copy a piece, if I cut a piece of code or a piece of whatever, I don't expect other stuff to happen afterwards. So that's it's trick one. Um, I can undo that away and then undo it again. But if I do the, the final undo to get back to where I started, it puts in another closed paragraph tag, even though that didn't exist there to start with. And that to me uh, is problematic i that feel i would i don't know if you call it a, a bug or if this is a feature request but that's not helpful to me um so i'd recommend or my 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 feature request is to make it not do that so if i cut if i cut yeah so two feature requests if i cut and paste don't add another thing and then if i undo whoops if i undo don't also then autocomplete and add code that wasn't there to begin with. So appreciate it. Thanks. Later. I don't know how to end those things. All right. Uh, so now we're going to clip that just because we're going to clip that. I was thinking I would have to clip it out of my other thing, but like I just realized like this has a clipping mechanism. So channel. clip I may still have to clip it out okay you can only go back like a minute okay I would have to clip it out later uh okay that's fine whatever we learned a lesson it'd be cool if you could do that um oh look at that that's like that banner that you would get of like hey check out my new thing or hey we use cookies click okay See, I'm trying to avoid putting a uh, like a header up there. Um, and it's funny though, because like I'm walking back into so there's there's lot there's general templates and ways that pages work, and I'm walking back into some of those. Like I'm gonna end up with some left nav over here, or probably, um, except maybe not. I don't know. Um, Like, I'm not doing a link back to the homepage right now. I don't know how long that's going to last. Um, we'll see. Like, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to push the experiments a little bit. But and like this date thing is fun for me just because it looks awesome. Um, but. Like, I really like that. Just that look. So, yeah, so we're going to we're going to put the date over there. That's what we're going to do. Um, this area under construction. All right, let's put this actually in. Hey, 
And so I'm not going to do I, I, one thing that I'm pretty sure I'm going to do or not do is put the actual day. You see, you know, December 2015, whatever. Yeah, that's probably okay. So most people probably won't notice the date is the trick with this. But it's at least on there. <coughs> you know what I need to, uh, so I actually need to test. Okay, that's fine. We'll leave that there for a second. But I need to test what's going to look like down here. So it's not going to be black text eventually. I don't want center. Uh, we'll leave the class there because we're probably going to mess with that in a second. Yeah, see, I just don't like that. Even if we made the text, text gray 500. I could probably shove it way closer under there. I don't know how to do that though. I did this on my old blog and you had to like, do relative or you had to do like position See, that's not awful, but it leaves all of this white space here. Why we'll center it? And then make it like 300. See, that's not awful. The space, this is too much space down here now. Um, and also, hmm, it's also at the bottom. So for longer text, which I don't know if this could be a longer text or not. Um, but if we put it at the top, Padding top five. That did not appear to change. Padding bottom five? No. Oh, there it goes. Just took it a minute. Yeah, see if I can still get this in this area. That's not awful. You ever see me do that? A lot? This is one of those shirts that doesn't, if you're sitting down and leaning forward, it doesn't quite stay, cover your, it doesn't overlap the pants quite enough. So it like keeps riding a little bit. So, okay. 
that's kind of okay. Like it's almost a watermark. This was this was the other thing I was thinking that might work. So because I want this, I want it to be headline text, and I want this basic format. That's a little too light. It's gonna push it up too tall to tie there. See this this works okay. Except I need to find one. Yeah, so that's the problem. Like if all the if all the posts I almost said episodes because those are right episodes. If all the episodes if all the posts See, they don't mind this, but like for longer stuff, Nope. I don't know if float rate works or not. It does. Oh, that looks awful. Again, just playing around like... I'm not a designer, so like designers could come up with better stuff for this, but like... All I really have the skill to do is just punch stuff and see what happens. Uh, we're going to move our paddings closer to where we can get to them. It's going to be here. It was 10 originally, right? See, that's pushed up funny. Oops, not a rocket, whatever. I just don't like it there. I'd love to have it down at the bottom. Well, you know what I... Uh... Hmm. I was thinking what I could do is have it like in line over here and chop this here so that it felt like it was just over this and you would have the white space there. But that still, again, kind of messes with the card stack of it. That's the wrong one. I'm trying to figure out if this is enough. Padding, oops, P, T, one. Two, I'm just seeing if I can get this in line, like if I can get the baselines of these in line. See, I need 2.5, which I don't think is a thing. Oops, especially 0.25. Does that actually do it? I don't think I don't think so. I did. Well, look at you. Yeah. 
You go, Tailwind. I think that's pretty solid right there, too, isn't it? Oh, it actually needs to be like 0.2.25, which that is not, a, there's no way that's a thing. Yeah, it moved way up. But see, like, if I do that, and then, like, padding bottom eight, and then we put a horizontal rule here. That is exactly where I wanted it, actually. I'm not noticing this right now, which is kind of nice. Um, PT1, it's a little high. Let me push it down a little bit more. I'm trying to get it baselined with the with this. It's not exactly it. Let's see, that's not as awful when it's not up. Uh, I need a longer headline. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, this isn't awful. If it's baselined with, and it's a little, it looks like it's a little off right now, or is that okay? I don't know if I can make this happen. Yeah, it looks, so it's just, it's just like a millimeter down. Okay, I'm not angry at this at all. Oh, this could be red. It's not gonna be helpful. Uh, finding things in Ruby's object space. Okay, so that works as a post. Let me find one. Hmm, this isn't bad. Because it's all, it, like it kind of disappears. All right, I'm gonna let that sit for a minute. I need to, uh, if I do this, I need to get it lined up exactly. Yeah, I'm not angry at that at all. I would still prefer it not be there, like 100%. I like that better. See, it's not quite fair to make it that close to invisible. Because, like, contrast in screens, people's eye contrast, the ability to see stuff, like, that would be actually invisible. We we'll make it actually a little bit lighter. Let's go to five. Or darker, I mean. That's too much. It's also funny because the I think that gray has a little bit of blue in it, or it could just be that my monitor's off. <sighs> See, it just doesn't.
See, it'd be super cool. Well, actually, what if, so it's December right now. What if we make it DEC? Which, are you supposed to have the comma after it? I can't remember. See, it's smaller space, so like, that's not as bad. But I think I like the actual word there better. Oh, of course, the other thing I could do, right, is make it smaller. I don't know how to make it smaller. What does text size 4 do? Nothing. Okay. Tailwind. This is the CSS library that I'm using. That's probably font size, isn't it? Font size. Small, okay. That does not appear to have changed. Font size, text, small, okay, yeah. Okay, let's go to extra small. Did I do the wrong one? I think I did the wrong one to start with. But that didn't look like it changed either. See, it just, it, it takes up that, it puts something in that corner. So, I just don't, like, I want the date, sure, but, like, oh, it's going to go. It's gotta go. Did I already update? Oh, come on, stop that. Well, that's awful. The uh, padding top should go away. What if we put it back up top? Above the title. We take this back down to four. And center it. bottom to push it down a little bit more. That went the other direction. Six, seven, six. Yeah, see, I want this kind of consistent 
space. Okay, that's a this is an awful. I can get I can get behind this. Cause like visually this becomes its own space and like this is separate. Let me see, I need a longer title. Yeah, that's okay too. We may have a winner here. All right, I wanna go It's in the middle of where it needs to be. It needs to be higher or lower. I think it needs to be one lower. So let's make this a five and this a five. I don't know if those paddings are the same. If they are, yeah, okay. So that basically stayed in the same place. <clears throat> All right, six and four. I'm not angry at that. One more, just to see what happens. Three, seven. I like the idea of keeping going past where you think you're gonna go, just to see what happens. Yeah, that actually helps open up that white space. That's not bad at all. Yeah, it... Like, if it's got to be there... And I do kind of want it in the content area. All right, so just to check it though, padding top zero, make this 10. I just wanna see what happens if we shove it all the way up. I don't think I'm gonna like it. I do not like it. Now let's look at two, eight. Again, I don't think I'm gonna like this, but I just kinda of wanna move stuff around and see where things go. Yeah, no. 7-3. Oops. Yeah, smaller title. Uh-oh. It's breaking. Nothing's working. I had to get caught in a loop a while ago and it like definitely took up I think 60 something gigs of RAM in virtual memory everything looks okay right now yeah see now I'm also so focused on it I need to walk away from it for a minute and the other oh the other the other thing is, I'm not looking at this at the right size. I need to be looking at it here. I'm even less angry at that now. All right, now that we got it normal size, so four and six, just to see what that looks like. Digital gardening. Hey, look at that. It's a recent post. Now I do think it needs to be down the one more. Seven. I'm about to I'm about to stop messing with this. I just I want to get the date on there. I'm not angry at that at all. It's 
got to be there. It's got to be there. It's fine. See, this is just invisible. And this is going to be too light, I think. <clears throat> yeah. Let's see what four looks like, just to experiment. Yeah, three it is. It's a giant jump between three and four, but that's cool. I like this. This is good. Um, it loses some of that note card feel. It absolutely loses some of that note card feel. But the date's important, sadly. And then the last thing to check. I don't expect to like this at all, but. Yeah, again, that, that forces that corner. But I didn't check it small up there, did I? Float right. Oh, this is going to shift all the that up. Okay. Padding bottom is relevant. Padding, we don't want to add just a couple more, one more padding top, maybe I think. Padding top one. I'm not really sure what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to get it down a little bit. Padding top five. I want to see if we kind of kind of baseline it again. up top. Oops. All right. Eight, two. We're just going to push it a little more. I don't care if I did this or not. one just see what happens hmm that feels weird I think that's too tight did we try this already I can't remember Seven three. Whoops. Three there, seven here. Alright, I think that's gonna be it. Or it's gonna be as good as I can get it. See now it feels well that that one definitely feels more like a page, but like it just loses that straight note card feel. That's a bummer. I can't figure out where else to put it. Like again, if it would go down, like if I could get it down there, like almost like as a signature, it'd be cool. Like that'd be fine. But like with longer pieces, 
do you want to do you want to know when it's coming from see that's not bad okay this is fine All right, last change, 6-4, or last test, for now, probably. I'm so hyper-focused on it right now too, right? HR class padding bottom three four hmm like if I can't get the uh, I should have done a better one or a different one If I can't get the full note card feel. Or can I kind of get the note card feel? Does that give us enough of a visual line up there that it feels like it? Yeah, since I don't have a header. This is an awful. That was one too many. Seven. I don't mind this. This is better. Oh, I should have done. I'm looking for a longer. That one's kind of crazy because it's a huge, like the headlines visually higher than the body. Excuse me. Uh oh, broke again. I'm not angry at this at all. Yeah, this is just fine. So I need to add like one more padding bottom. And by one, I mean two. To get that because I want the visual I want the visual weight of it to be centered like it's on a note card that I like this I like this a lot and I'm okay with the fact actually so I, I'm actually cool with the idea that the bottom padding is a little bit more than the sides like I like the the push just a little bit Seventeen. Whoops, seventeen's not a thing apparently. Okay, eighteen. Also not a thing. Nineteen. I'm guessing it goes to twenty. Twenty it is. Let's see what that looks like. That may. Oops, that may be too much. Didn't catch it. There it is. 
That's too much. I could push the rest of this stuff down a little bit, but I think that's starting to get a little separation anxiety. That change? This is pretty good. Okay, okay, I'm into this. I'm into this. I'm into this. Where is, so here's the title. Let me look at title for a second. The other thing I wanted to do, male bottom, let's go to six here, or margin bottom, whatever. Nah, it's a little too far. I didn't mean to go to four, but let's see what happens. That's pretty good, actually, right there. I need a, there we go. Nope, okay, Le needs a little bit more. Oops, uh, what am I doing? I'm going here and I'm gonna make that a five, just to test it. Whatever, about this web log, ha. Okay, see, yeah, that's a good, that's a good space right there. Okay, I'm happy with this. And that's good space at the bottom. That's funny, it feels... I, I, it feels very much like a piece of paper, like you're kind of reading on stuff. Like, so much of the stuff... It feels plain, but it also feels crisp to me. It feels corporate though, which is a little bit weird. Like it's not all designy or whatever. It just feels like, and like I, I expect in some level that's going to be a turnoff to some people, because it's not designy. All right, let's figure out how to actually make it do its date. So uh -oh, what's going on here? Is this, oh, that's the index. Okay, I don't need to do it on the index, I don't think. Just real quick, let me see what the transition is. So it's a little different. Where there's a link up here somewhere. I thought oh, I must have moved down here. <sighs> See, that's bumping down now. Um, index. We have to turn off word wrap. I that's really messing with me with a giant font. Control Z or Command Z, whatever, something. So I'm just gonna do nothing up here. I'm just looking for the spacing.
top goes the three here, I think. That exploded. Okay, there we go. <laughs> ah! Alright, so step one, do this. Okay, is that close? Is that... Alright, I'm not going to move them this time. I'm just going to do padding bottom, padding top. So I'm going to do three here. This is three. I'm going to do, this is just a hack. Oh, well, actually, I guess I could do six, right? We could do math here. Six. That is not the homepage. That did not work. Oh, because padding isn't the same as spacing. So, yeah. But we need to have and MBSP in here. <laughs> Such a hack. Such a hack. Let's see if that didn't come down a little bit. There we go. Okay, so that's there. Hello, world. That's cool. Uh, I'm actually okay with this. Yeah, there we go. It's not exactly what I was going for, but you know what? It's pretty close. Now you can run my site too, except you can't anymore. New Year, let's look at a thing. I don't know if I can change the color of that. Color, color, color. So it's got text color, it's got font color, it's got background color. I wonder if you do BG. It's probably not going to work. Oh, wait. Am I on? I'm on the index page. So I should go look at that to start with. Nope. I wouldn't mind it being just a touch lighter. Which I'm sure I could figure out, but like right now, this is fine. Oh, actually, back up. So I want to see. Yeah, it's. This doesn't move, which is what I'm looking for. The line stays in the same place, and the header stays in the same place. This is moving, but that's okay. Um. Yeah. So now, okay, that's cool. I'm with. I'm with this. This is good. I just need to make it the date, the actual date. Get rid of that. Whatever. It's all fine. Uh, nine. Cool, whatever. That's nah, pretty close. Whatever. Okay, yeah, I'm happy with this. I can, I can deal with this. 
Das ist fein. Okay, let's figure out the actual date. Um, better than the original. So I think here's index legacy. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't save. Summary, I didn't save. I'm gonna have to go look up how to do the dates in Hugo. Hugo post date. Probably should save that. Title, date, format. So this is gonna go. Here. It's weird. Two thousand six, oh nine, twenty nine. So Date format. So wait, can I just do December 2015, 2012, whatever? Does that work? Is I gonna figure that out? 29, 29. I don't want the, it's doing something funky. Twenty nine oh nine twenty nine. Uh, okay, so that did not work. Got the December right. Oh wait. Or is it just doing whatever I'm putting in there? Yeah, it's just doing whatever I'm putting in there. Okay, yeah. Seems like you should have. Assuming a key value of that in a context files front matter, you can run the date through dot format layout by a string for your desired output at build time. Date format function. This sounds like something I should look at. Date format converts the textual representation of daytime into a specific format. These are formatted with a layout string. Yeah, except it didn't figure it out. Format function. That's where I just was. Goes layout styles. Format your day. It's just gonna take me back to the same page, isn't it? Oh, look at this. I will deal with that in a minute if I can't figure it out here. Why didn't this work? Do you have to set it at 2006? September 2006. Oh, okay, that's super weird. I spelled December wrong? Hmm. See, that's, I don't like that. Oh, it's also saying 2006 again, which I don't know if that's right or not. 2005, okay. Uh, part two, whatever, I don't know what this is. 2005, I, to, I just wanna see like a different, February 2013, okay, it looks like it's updating.
February 2013, download speed 2.8 megabits. Oh, it's supposed to be 15. That's funny. Okay, that's gonna be my dates. I like that. I can deal with that. And the home page. I really do need to have a link to the home page. Yeah, see, there's like all the conventions and all the stuff that happen all the time on websites are there for a reason. Like we figure those things out. It's fun to like drop them all and then like see if you could not have them. But like, yeah, we kind of need them. And I need to clean up this text. I'll do that. Um, I can hang out of this. I can get behind this. I wonder if I should have a quote under each one of the things or above it. I actually I'm gonna put quotes in here. Vegas looks like Tron. I remember this. 2012. That was eight years ago. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Photo's actually there. I remember that. I was just wandering around Vegas at like two in the morning. Possibly inebriated. Uh, okay. I think that's cool on the site updates for now. Does it still work? Yep. It's kind of weird that it doesn't... Like, if you delete something, that that doesn't reset it or whatever. List of posts. Oh, I can delete that page. Because it's just called posts now. Uh, I'm going to do that right now while I'm thinking about it. Uh, where is it? List of posts. Should be in content. It should be right next to this list. Uh... I don't understand how that's happening. I mean, that's the URL. That's how it gets created. Oh, I think I moved it. Uh, so I think I moved it, and it's still just hanging out there in memory. That's what it is. Okay, that's fine. Um, Yahoo Music Unlimited. Way back. When was that? 2005. Been a minute. Yeah, this is cool. All right, I'm I'm good with this. Uh, I'm just gonna leave those open because if I close them, I'm never gonna find them again. Uh, all right, we're gonna push the site, and then we're gonna go play with some Django. Nope, that's not the right one. Where is there? It is. I want to see how big the site is after doing this. It's still going to be, I think it's going to still be like four gig, which I got to figure out what's going on there. That like, that's not that bad. Um, I mean, it, clearly it is, but um, the good news is I put it, I put the pages through web, I put the homepage through web page test and it was saying it took like three seconds to download. So that's not as awful as I thought it was because the content, the way the search is set up, the content of the entire site 
is on every single page in order to power the search because the search happens client side on the page itself, which is not how to be long term, but like that's what it's doing right now. And again, this is the, the whole digital garden thing where it's just like get a thing up, get it going, get it running and see what happens. Um, so it's I'm doing this like this is like the, the public performance of the garden, I guess is what you call it. All right, let me just see how big it thinks. Uh, actually, we can come back and we'll definitely see that because it will take a little bit to run. Um, put that over there. Three gig, 4.4 4 gig. <laughs> like, I think it's pushing all the images, which is part of it. But I don't. Oh, yeah. By the way, the stream might get choppy. Oh, yeah. Ooh, it looks like it might get real choppy. Good news is there's not a whole lot of like, action going on, so hopefully it's not too bad. Um, all right, so this, I think... Toolkit, yeah, yeah. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is, so my that localhost site that I had for my launch pad is warped because um, MAMP didn't agree with the most recent software update. Um, for a video of, for a clip, of VS code B behavior that sucks. There we go. These pages are bumped up like just a millimeter and it throws me because I keep seeing the. Oh, there's a list of posts. If I close this, yeah, don't save. Okay. Ooh, secret. We're gonna put that on the homepage. So, when people follow, right, a tradition of the Twitch thing, it's like, hey, welcome to name of stream. And I didn't really have a name of the stream So I was just saying like, hey, welcome to the whatever. Um, and I was like, ah, I guess I'm going to call this the whatever. Uh, and uh, Gaffa, W Gaffa. I don't know if the W's are supposed to count. You just call them Gaffa. Um, said, ah, the digital whatever. And I was like, that's that's what this is now. This is the digital whatever. Uh, oh, and actually, I've already got the uh, I've already got it right there. Look at that. We gotta go look at that for a second. So one, we're gonna move this over here. Two, we gotta go back to the homepage. Yeah, see, I need a homepage link. I really do. The digital whatever, there you go. I'm really genuinely pleased with how this is going and looking and stuff. Um, it still feels so corporate to me or whatever. Not corp yeah, like. The word that keeps coming to mind is crisp. Cause like I don't it's been I don't remember the last time I saw. Well, so part of it too is you don't see pages now that don't have ads and other stuff all over it. So this just feels like the one thing. Um, and so I got, I'm gonna have to be careful with what I put over here because I really kind of like this feel. Um, and part of me is like, what if I just, see, I'm back into it again. All right, this won't last long. Because I want to get to, I want to, all this stuff is stuff I want to be doing. But also, 
Yeah, so you need something over here. Um, and I'm thinking, like, since it's the digital garden. The digital garden of whatever. Oh, that's not bad. Where'd it go? Uh, index page. This is it. Nope. Gardener, garden. I could call it Digital Garden 9000 or something like. But so I like having the whatever, the digital whatever garden. Oh yeah. So that's, I mean, it's kind of weird, but like if the stream is the digital whatever, this is the digital whatever garden. <gasps> that's actually not bad. <laughs> it won't make any sense, but like. <sighs> All right. Jumping, jumping back. All right, so this is gonna. All right, we're gonna have to bump through this a little bit. Um. Oh, so here's. Oh, that's funny. I've actually got. That's how this all started. Which I still don't mind this at all either. It was different when I dropped to. Uh, hey, Bob Ross, what's up? It was different when I dropped down to just having the titles. But like with the descriptions, the trick is I don't want to have to add descriptions to everything. All right. Happy Sunday. Hope it's chill for you. So your dart notes? Dart, is that a language? That's a language, right? Absolutely, yeah, what you got? Send them over. See, now... Well, that's cool. They're like this is this is cool. I go back and forth, but like I'm, I need to get. I want to start working on the actual stuff. Cool. GitHub. Uh, I'm gonna have to get a bite in a minute. I'm starving. Oh, let me put this back in while I'm looking at that, just to get that there. All right, so we can close this. That's fine. We can close that because it's broken. We can close that because it's the same thing. All right, so let's get to toolkit here if we can find it. My computer's running very slow right now. All right, so those were all the... examples of... Watch him a thing. So config JS fuel chain links pages. So in pages, am I calling Crest Pages homepage? Templates, pages, homepage. Toolkit. Okay, so I don't think I'm calling that. So I think I'm trying to figure out. It's been a minute since I've played with this. Sweet. Oh, I'm wearing window. Stand by. Stand by. That's what you got. So we got a lot more. Well, I hope there's, there we go. <laughs> Integer, int age, for seven print age, right on. String stuff. Yeah, no, I, got, <laughs> I found it. <laughs> but I was like, you you do have some, some ways to go, if that's it. Um, 
You can change its string with another one, but you can't change its type. Okay. Bool and Boolean, right? Is knight is true. Gotcha. The dynamic type can be changed. Dynamic name. Oh, interesting. So if you throw dynamic in front of it, it lets it be mutable. Okay, that's cool. Main function of a Dart file is main. Okay, and you throw void at it. Oh, okay. So it has like return values. I return different types within a function. Void main. Print something. String greed equals greeting. Age equals get age. Okay, so here's your greeting and returning hell. Okay, yeah, so string. Yeah, so it's got a return type. That's cool. I like your format here. You're like, how long did it take you to like get everything lined up? Just made a quick repo. Yeah, cool. List names. This is straightforward. I like it. So list is like a array or is it array? Same thing. Whatever. Everybody calls them different things. Names.add. Okay, so that's how you push stuff onto it. And the names remove. Oh, you can do them directly. You don't have to do it by index. That's cool. You got any data type to a list. Not recommended. Cool. Sharp. Yeah, I, like I'm, you know, I'm a huge fan of the notes, right? So anything and everything, just keep throwing them in um but this is perfect and like I, so there's a couple times actually so like i should have done something a second ago where i threw a note in like I, I didn't have a note actually i don't think i did let me see uh hugo date theme notes yeah see i don't have i i took out dates from my templates but I didn't know how to put them back in. And you know what? I'm actually going to do it right now because I'm talking about it and I'm here. So we're going to do it. Uh, where I forgot where everything is already. So single here, it should be here. Date post, right? There you go. Uh, let me make a note of this. So site, you go date. Add a date output to Hugo. You use a weird text format. Weird method of just a text string, which freaks me out. For example, that will do will do something like December twenty fifteen, whatever. Pretty obvious by looking at it, but only some months work. E.g., I tried. December. Uh, I try. Actually, let me put the whole thing in there. I tried December for it, and it. Whoops, December. We need December still. D E C E M B E R, and it always printed December. So watch out for that. Uh, do you have a database at your site? Um, you can only deploy iOS on Android, iOS app on Android, right? I mean, Mac. Yeah, I actually knew what you meant. That's funny. Um, so I don't have a database for my site. Um, my site is built with software called Hugo. Uh, I think it's called Go Hugo. Um.
that is a static. So like my my quote unquote database is in this content directory. It's just a list of all these directories, each of each one of which has a file. So there's no database behind it. It's all just a ton of files. Um, the though what's funny is I'm about to start working on a Django uh, website that's an internal website just for me that does have a database on it that I'll help that I'll use to manage some of the content to go into these flat files. Just kind of weird, but yeah, and it's uh it's written in Go. Yeah, and it's super duper fast. Well, it was super fast until I did all the stuff that I'm doing right now with it. Um, it used to it used to build pages in no time, but right now, oh, actually, let me see the public folder. Hang on a second. I want to see if this is really true. Yeah. So the public folder, which is so you start in the content folder, and that's where you do all your raw stuff, and then when you run the Hugo command, it munges everything up and makes the public folder, which is what actually gets deployed of all the static files. That is currently 5.3 gig, which is ridiculous and something is wrong. Um, so I got to figure that out. Um, hey, Zelly. It's going cool. Um, I've uh, I just made some updates. Uh, so I completely changed the color tones and all the other stuff. Um, I just added some dates up here. If you find a page with some dates, uh, I don't remember. I put the search on. I can't remember if you saw that last time, but it's like if I do sunset, whatever sunset, like it just it's a client side search. Problem with that is I have to put the content of the entire site on every single page. So I was just saying, I think you may have seen my, my site right now is five gigs which is stupid. And yeah, uh, Bob, Go is made by Google. I'm like 90% sure of that. Uh, PHP databases are a lot easier to make with SQL. Um, wait, so you're stuck on where you should be. Uh, what do you mean you're stuck on where you should be? Yeah, I got to figure out what's going on. Like, I'm like, I'm trying to deploy right now. Um, and it's moving, it's moving four and a half gigs. So some of it is in sync already or whatever. But like, I got to figure out what's going on with that because that's ridiculous. But what's crazy is I went to web page test. And like the home page. It's like it's not taking that long to download um, on their stuff. Or run with a QLED. Oh, uh, like Mongo. Oh, okay. Um, I don't have any experience with Mongo um, or any of the other like. Are those are they also called NoSQL databases? Um. I don't know. I don't know enough about them. Like for me, I, I've you know grown up with uh, relational databases, and it would be and so the like a PHP database would really be like the database would be like Postgres or MySQL, and then PHP is what you use to talk to it through SQL or sorry, SQL is what you use to talk to it. PH so you'd write your write PHP that builds SQL commands that talks to Postgres. Um, you may already know that, but just to make sure you're straight on that. Um, I've got a pretty good idea about how those are relational databases. I've got a pretty good idea how those work. I've got no idea how the other ones work. So I know lots of people use them. I just, I can't tell you much on it. Um, but yeah, so this is crazy because like the whole document complete. I mean, it's, so this, the homepage apparently is only like a meg. And I'm sure that's because it's gzipped, right? Because it's just, it's all text. But like, it, it only takes like three seconds to get there. So I was actually pretty happy with that. Um, oh yeah, the the CSS file is also like four meg. So it's like, it's all ridiculous, but it's moving okay. Uh, but I definitely like, 
this goes in the digital garden thing in terms of like I'm doing all this stuff and just pushing it kind of step by step by step um, and doing it live. Um, so I there there will be work done on that because that's I, I'm not gonna leave it doing that. Um, but what I want to do now is start getting my um, my little internal tools up to help me publish content because uh, I've got a local database or local. My local site that I use for tools broke on my most recent system update. So instead of fixing it, I'm going to move over to Django, which I've wanted to do for a while, um, which is going to be a little bumpy because I'm not really used to Django yet. Um, can't get MongoDB to work. Go all the way through my back end just to find the errors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's only one way that I know to do that, and that's just to knuckle down and do it. Um, the let me know how that goes, but yeah, there's no there's there's no way through it, but through it, at least not one that I know of. If if you can magic through that, let me know, and we'll sell that for a billion dollars. Uh oh. All right, so like, as the, uh, you haven't slept in 24 hours? Yeah, go take a nap. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't actually mess, if I hadn't slept in 24 hours, I would not mess with code. That's, that's going to be not fun, and you're not going to make progress, and you're probably going to make things worse. Yeah, take a break, walk away. Absolutely walk away from it. Take a break. Clear your head. Take a nap. You'll be way better off for it. Oh, that's why you got someone to help you out. All right, on. That's cool. That is 100% acceptable. All right, so I guess the first thing I need to do is I need to figure out what I'm going to build. So I got this links thing going. Is this alive? I don't remember what progress I made on this. Links. Nope. It go boom. Uh, all right, the first thing I actually do want to do, let me find the config, because I want to set this up for a home page. And right now, now I'm super confused, because it says it's going to links URLs. What's in links URLs? Views index. So what's in the views? Links index. Templates links index. Am I in the right place? Something's wrong. Hey, it's one gig through. Am I, the right? I don't think I'm in the right place. This doesn't make sense. Dev toolkit. Dev toolkit. What is going on? Hang on, let me clear all the decks here. Uh, okay, config, URLs. Nothing on the path is going to links. So let's start the site. Site's alive. Let's go to the homepage. That doesn't make any sense. This is on 8,000, right? Yeah. How do you make a browser in Firefox? New. Oh, they're all, sorry, they're all things. Whatever. Come here. Uh, I'm super confused. All right, so we're going to links URLs with nothing. So here's links URLs. So nothing comes in, nothing, and it goes to views index. Views index is the only thing in here, and it's going to links index.html. What is this, batch name? 
Oh, main. Okay, yeah. So links index is this. That is not what we're seeing. Oh, okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Where is it? This is calling base template. Where's base template? Templates. Base. What's this doing? There's all that. Content, block content. Refresh. It was, oh, 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 those are the links. Okay, okay, okay. I understand what's going on. I got it. Uh... You like learning new languages? Yeah, that's cool. Uh, yeah, it is. You gotta... Not you gotta, but like... I tend to focus on one thing at a time. Like... Sometimes you get, like, it feels more boring for me to do that, but like, I'm... The long term for me is better if I just focus on the one thing at a time and do it and then do the next thing instead of trying to like overlay them. Um, there's like the idea of change cost, right? So like switching back and forth between stuff can has a cost, uh, cognitive and time. Um, when in doubt, use brute force. Uh, that's an interesting quote. Um, I, I think there are times maybe when that I can get behind that idea, but that's not the way that I would go kind of all the time. Uh, but I can appreciate it. Like, uh, there have been times when brute force has definitely worked for me. Okay, so let's get rid of all this. We don't need this section stuff. MD container auto. Okay, and now I know, so this, this is also cool because I just spent a bunch of time using Tailwind, the CSS framework. So, I have a much better understanding about what's actually happening here. Ta-da! I knew that was gonna happen. Uh... <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Hacker? Shh. Definitely, definitely not. Uh... Let's see. Okay, so now, okay, so I gotta figure out, I mean, the biggest thing I'm struggling with right now is what, how, like, I've got so many things. I've got so many ideas going on right now that I kind of don't know which one to get to. So I kind of need to pick one and go, but like, I'm still just a little bit like, uh, oh, brute force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Hashcat. Is that the one that gives you like the rainbow tables of the lists of all the hash stuff so you can just reverse it? I don't remember. What, which one's Hashcat? I don't know Hashcat. I be thinking of something else. Oh, advanced password recovery. Okay. Ah, oh, that's an awesome icon. Password recovery tool. I like it. That's cool. This is not the one that I was thinking of. I, I don't know the one I was thinking of. Like, so the one actually the one thing of wasn't really necessarily software, but just the, you may already know, but one of the things that's out there is all the various hashes for unsalted passwords that you can get. I think they're called rainbow tables so that if you get a list of passwords, even if they're hash, you can reverse into them. Um, but I, I think most people, hopefully most people are salting their passwords now, so that doesn't happen as much. John the Ripper is better. Oh, it's like lip line. No, you don't reverse the hash. What you do is you take thousands and thousands of uh, passwords or potential passwords, and then you actually hash all of them. 
and then you have the hash list over here. So when you get a hash, you just match it to whatever you've got, and then you know what the thing was that hashed it. So it's not reversing it, it's just knowing what all the potential hashes are. Yeah, so that's, and that's probably some of what Hashcat does, right? Yeah, 100, yeah, bazillion passwords, then you hash them. And, oh yeah, so that's that's actually what Hashcat is doing, right? It's a rainbow table stuff. That makes perfect sense, actually. Um, but yeah, because you know, if you know the if you know the methodology that a password is hashed in, and there's not something in there that makes it not possible to do that, you can do that. I guess is the easiest way to say it. Uh, yeah, we were talking about Kali tools the other day too. I don't remember if that was you. Um, all right, so what do I want to do? So I need links. So the other thing I really need is. Yeah, Cali. There you go. Yeah, grab it. Like it's open source free, right? Get all your oh hashcats on it. There you go. Just be just be careful with all that stuff. Don't uh, don't go somewhere you shouldn't. Because there are really really good people on the other end. Oh, yeah, that's 27 gig. Oof, seven gig storage. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's pushing a little bit. I've been down there before. Um, you, I think, can't you do... Uh, what do they call it? USB boot? Bootable USB. There you go. So you can make a, you can make a, USB, a bootable USB and not install it on your machine and just run it off the USB drive. Um, if you want to play with it. Yeah, it's pretty slick. And it doesn't touch your, it doesn't touch your hard drive, basically. Um, which also gives you plausible deniability if you need that. Um, all right, so we got our content going here. Let me dig into this for a minute. Um. And so I'm just using. <laughs> uh, so I'm just using. So I'm not. So with Django, you can actually build all the forms. Like I could build front end forms for all this stuff. Whoops, that is not the word. Admin. Uh, but I'm just going to use the admin console console that comes with it um no uh yeah you're not gonna have a lot of luck finding a um uh a mac stuff people like the uh, hackintosh is out there i think a little bit um but it's kind of tricky it's basically tricky to run um Bash object. Uh, no, so it's, Django's really Python, um, but it gives you a bunch of stuff out of the box. Like it gives you an admin interface out of the box, but you still have, like I still have to make, uh-oh. That's bad, I broke it. Um, but like the way it works is like I still have to define it's it's relatively straightforward once you get your head around it. But like I still have to build the database models, which there's none there. Uh, where's my links? Here we go. So you still have to build your database model. You have to define your models and then you have to define the views for the models and then you have to define the templates for all that stuff. But like once you've got that, it does a bunch of stuff for you. Visual markdown files. What do you mean by visual markdown files? Uh, ba, 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 ba. So I guess what I want to do is in the template, 
Where's the views? No, where's base? Okay, I'm close base. Here's index. So category name. For categories and category. Category name. All right, so let's see. And this is in the batch of main. So I should have, so categories. This categories, AWS, miss. And then let me actually open another thing over here. So AWS has EC2 in it, IAM in it, and S3 in it. Miscellaneous isn't showing up. That's kind of weird. So there's that. Oh, whoops. I have all those open. Where'd my admin go? Okay, so there's the page. I want to leave this here. Refresh. Be the right size. You come here, you go here, you go here, you go here. Categories. Miscellaneous. Categories in work. Oh, 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 because it's in work. I gotcha. This is in main. Really what I want to build though is a visual interface to make markdown files instead of having to use formatting. Uh, huh, I don't know this. Open like a new tab. Nope, that was definitely the wrong thing to do. Come here, copy link. Arr. So are you trying to work on this side or are you trying to work on this side? Related. Links, markup. Oh, okay, so this is your hierarchy. Interesting, okay. Huh, that's interesting. I don't really use mind map stuff. It doesn't fit in my head. This one worked because it's all the way up there. Is that just because it's too big? Nope, I just missed it. That's interesting. Hmm. Yeah, so you can put that in there, okay. Code blocks, yeah, interesting. Oh, that's interesting. Related, just goes straight into links. Okay, I got you, features, okay. Yeah, so it just gives you hierarchy. Can you do third level? More levels. Yep, oh, there you go. That's cool. Keep that in mind. Yeah, I just like mind maps don't aren't they don't map on my brain basically. Um, uh, okay, so we got links going. So in our links, here's our links. Here's I am. There's that. It's in the category EC2. Oops. So now let's just put, where's our template? So for link two in link set all, I don't know why it's link two. For link in links. Oh, so that's, uh, so in our model, that's pages. We don't need that. Here's links models. So links have a name and a URL. So to be explicit here, what we're gonna do is in our view, nope, in our models, no, in our here, there we go. So we do link.name. We're gonna make sure that that actually works. Can't remember if that updates automatically or not. And then we're gonna do, we're gonna wrap it in the URL. So a href equals quote link URL. So drop that, drop that. I don't know why it just tabbed itself. Is this auto update or no? No. Oh, also didn't work. 
That's weird. Why didn't it work? Okay, yeah, that's there. Oh, wait. It, it did work, probably. Yeah, there's just no highlight for the thing. I kind of wish... So Tailwind normalized links out to just be black text. Like, I kind of wish they had left it at least blue or given it something like that. Oh, right on. Cool. See it. Uh, actually, I'm going to be right back in just a minute, too. Because uh, I'm going to get a good product to eat. I'll be right back.
I should have finished chewing first. Maybe put in my earphones. Headphones, earphones, earbuds, whatever. Little shot of cold pizza. Ooh, excuse me. <laughs> Thankfully, no. Uh, yeah, I. They seem to not be actually electrocuting my ears right now, which is a pleasant change of pace from having the ears electrocuted. That was uh, that was not fun. Yeah, so I threw. I literally threw threw one across the room, and it happened to hit the garbage can. So it was like an amazing shot. Um, I still have two pairs of them though, because I bought them. It was nine dollars for three pairs, which probably should have been a like I knew they were gonna sound crappy. I didn't think electrocution was in the mix. Um now we know. Nine dollars three pairs, little little dicey. Uh I'm trying to set up a uh excuse me, a local um Django server to deal with kind of, it's going to end up being kind of a, a CMS. Um, this file is very large, which is why it's not opening yet, I think. Oh, this is trouble. Because uh, I've, so I've got this launchpad page normally has a page that opens up with a bunch of links and some tools and stuff. But I did a OS update the other day, and it broke MAMP, which powers that page. So instead of actually going and fixing it, I'm trying to move over, or moving over to Django, which is something I wanted to do for a while. Um, oops, there's an SVG. Is this just too big to open? I'm just not going to open it. Um, Dev, so how's it? Uh, how's it going on your side of the camera? Static. CSS. See if we can get this to open up here. Yeah, the 4 meg file, which is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous for a CSS file, but it gets me what I need right now, so I'll take it. Yeah, they so they took out, uh, yeah, 183,000 lines. Ah, it's a lot of CSS. Oh, nice. What's your code doing? Now I got to pick a color again. Where's... Oh. Need to get rid of that. Okay. Get our color color picker. Uh, I'm gonna go with reddish links. I'm gonna go with this color red link right here. DD twenty six eighteen sounds like a winner. Give that a shot. So if I do this, hopefully when I come back over here and refresh. Oh, it's cached, isn't it? Um, so if I refresh, or rename, I just call this styles v2. I think that's what I'm calling. And then come back into base. There's templates, base. And call this styles v2. That should force it to work. There we go. There's a red. <clears throat> no, find a config file. Okay, that's cool. Then home door, then a current door. Oh, okay. I gotcha. Right, right. So cascade down until you see the the one that you that works, right, or the one that's there. 
that's good. That's I didn't realize that was a thing for the longest time, but like once I discovered it or heard about it, I was like, that's very smart. Config management is actually something I'm gonna have to try and figure out for this. Because I'm doing my development on the same machine that I'm doing my production on. And like, that's always fraught. Like there's not like a, a super clean way to, to do it, right? Um, or at least I haven't found one. Um, all right, so that can do the links. And then I guess what I want to do, well, so I don't know how to do the formatting here. Um, I guess what I could do, so let me just play with some categories here. So if I got categories, AWS, main, I don't actually know what the other links are that I had. Um, Oops, here. Streamers, how about that? Save, oops, it's gotta go in main, save. So here, there's streamers. And so what I wanna do in the view, or in this, is for category and category. Okay, so I'm gonna do, so we're inside a container. And then an index, instead of this, what I'm gonna do for container and containers, I'm just gonna make a div. And again, I'm not, this is not my strong suit in any way, form or fashion. Um, oh, I can put the, yeah, we can do the list in here, but I wanna have the categories split out to their own things. Oops. Ah. Okay, if I'm here and I hit back, just go to the tab that's right here. Frustrating, 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 frustrating. Sometimes, whatever, it's not that bad. Uh, so let's see what that looks like. It looks exactly the same. Div, div. Oh, I need to tell the divs to be Grids. I'm just going to grab this straight out of this. So here's our top level one, which is just going to use this. And let me see what that does. Okay, there we go. So that's not the color we want, but it's fine for right now. Um, Order, order, gray, 200, whatever. I just wanna see if I can see something. Okay, there we go, slick. And then, so that's not a grid yet. Crap, where's the grid thing go? Div, here's the grid. Why wouldn't I just do this? Grid gap two. That, whatever, I'm just gonna leave it here, that's fine. And then in here, so now maybe our divs are gonna show up in different places. Yes, yes, okay, good. So this'll just give me links. Like, give me shelter only, you know, not music. Oh, it's only 50 lines of code to roll that? That's nice. Oh, wow, excellent. So hopefully no trip down to the hospital for you. Um, I may that heal quickly and not require doctors or uh, nurses. No, just kidding. Um, 
not requiring medical attention. How about that? Uh, this is actually cool because I understand a little bit now about Tailwind. And it's nice because I think if I come here and I do margin top, let's say eight, it should go down just a little bit. Just like that. And then for these divs, I want padding on the X axis of three. Nice. And so this is this grid. Wait, wait, what? Why is the grid down here? Oh yeah, yeah, right, right. So this grid is 10 columns. I really only want six columns. And I'm not worried about responsiveness on this at all. Like this is this is only for my screen. So this is all the responsive stuff. I'm just gonna nuke it. And refresh. Okay, yeah, that gives us some spacing there. Um, language I want to learn. JavaScript, HTML, CSS, Flutter. I don't know what Flutter is. Dart and PHP. Um, right on. Uh, so I would do HTML before you do... I mean, it's HTML and JavaScript you can kind of do simultaneously. Like, But HTML is relatively straightforward if you haven't already kind of dug into it. Um, cause there's like, there's no conditionals. There's, well, there's not really conditionals or variables or loops or any of that stuff. It's just the, the tags, um, CSS up to you, but I totally recommend a framework. For example, tailwind, which I have been using, uh, just cause it's, it depends on how much you want to learn about CSS, right? Are you trying to, what, what, what's your goal? Um, cause like my goal really, oh. It's alive. This is the page. Nope, it's not alive. That's just cached. This is what that page looks like that I'm about to reproduce. Uh, cool, yeah. So this was just the basics of it. I've built this page like 30 times. Oh, Bootstrap. Yeah, that's another one. Yeah, I use Bootstrap. In fact, Bootstrap might be what's from behind this. Um, that's what I used on my old site, I think. One of my old sites, I don't remember which one. But yeah, if you're... If your goal is to be like somebody who makes pages professionally, you'll want to get into like CSS in general or specifically. But like, if you're just trying to build some stuff for yourself, I would 100% go with the framework. Yeah, use Bootstrap. Cool. And the only reason I've tried Tailwind is because one of the discords I'm in, somebody was talking about it and said it was good. And I was like, all right, give that a shot. Okay, so I think actually now what I want to do... I want to figure out how to deploy this is really what I want to have to do. It's really what I want to do. Um... And it's tricky because it's not, like I could just work straight off of this. Do I have Postgres on this machine? Nope. Postgres Mac, is this on brew, whoops, Max. Is this on brew or Postgres? Without a T. Wow, I just messed that one all up, didn't I? Post G R E S. Postgres. There we go. Download the installer. So I'm gonna use so Django uses in development, it uses uh SQLite. Um 
Yes, please. Ooh, was Enterprise DB. It's kind of weird. Must be a CDN. Um, it always freaks me out if I'm downloading stuff from a site and it takes me to some other thing. Like, I'm always worried that, like, crapware is going to be rolled into it. I did get that from the Postgres site, right? Yes. Maybe. Certified by EDB and also, okay. This is on the Postgres site, so I guess I'm going to leave them. Um, but I don't want to use SQLite for the production version. Um... By and large, it's only me on the machine. Well, it's only me on the machine, and by and large, it's not going to have a whole lot of interactions. Because the thing you got to watch out for with MySQL databases or with SQLite databases, if two processes try and hit it at the same time, it can fry everything because it's really just a flat file hanging out there. And if I only used Django, it wouldn't be that big a deal. But I'm going to have other scripts talking to the database as well, so I need to get an actual database behind it. Yeah, so this one is just going to be installation, I think. This is not going to be the most awesome thing ever. Open it. I'm not super worried about people seeing my password being typed, but like that, you could pick that up and that would be a bummer. Next library Postgres. Yes. Let's do all that stuff. That all looks awesome. Uh, password. What is going on? Uh, no, so it's kind of funny. What it is, I need to actually figure out if I can link up that video. Give me one second. Um, Cause I don't, this isn't working the way it's, I thought it was going, there it goes. Let's have a look, okay, sure. Yeah, that looks good. Um, I found a YouTube video out there that walks you through it, but basically you make a new scene, if, I, if I'm remembering this right, and you take, you basically drag that scene down so it's only like yay big. And then on your actual scene that you use, you import that scene or use it as a source. And then you when you stretch it back out, pixelizes everything and blurs it. Um, so there's no, you don't have to do any plugins or anything like that, which is awesome. Cause like I, when I was first looking at it, like everything was pointing to like, go get these plugins and like all this other stuff. Um, and I kind of didn't want to do that. So that, but this person was just like, yep, just go. Whoosh, whoosh. Um, it works great. So that's also fun. Yeah, I love it too, because it's like, it makes it look like, I don't know, like some kind of weird Morris Cody, techie, alien-y, whatever. Um, like, you know, all this stuff in the in the bottom corner or whatever. It's just like, I don't know. It looks neat somehow. I don't know. Um, all right, give me one second. Uh, complete. Setup is finished. Stack Builder, maybe use it. Download and install additional tools, drivers. Yeah, sure, why not? Welcome to Stack Builder. Uh, okay, this is doing all kind of extra stuff too. 
I'm gonna select at least one package and solve for I don't think I need this stuff. Um, oh, sorry, yeah, sorry. It's asking me to install extra things and I don't think I actually need them right now. Yes, we don't need any of that, cool. Okay, so question is, is PG a command now? No, okay. Postgres app. Oh, open the app and you have a Postgres server ready and awaiting new connections. That's cool. Oh, I could have done it via homebrew. Should have done that. Should have read. Oh, well. Uh, do I dare do it via homebrew? I think I'm going to do that. Okay, this is probably a bad idea, but brew install Postgres. Even though I just installed it. This is a bad idea. Like, I know this is a bad idea. Bail. Okay. What I don't understand is why I don't have the PG command. Packages. Third party distributions. This is our software catalog file browser. And I need, uh, I need the command line tool. Is it just Postgres now? What is it? Postgres does not know where to find the server configuration file. Oh. <laughs> nice. Good follower. Uh, I'm going to have to read directions now, aren't I? The installer, stack builder, installer command graphical, command line silent, installer's design straightforward, advanced users use zip archive. Uh, documentation. Oh, is it fighting you, Bob? I'm stuck on my database now too, so we can be stuck together. Um, Mac, Postgres, command line. It's gonna tell me to do homebrew. 2016, that's not the greatest. Using command line tools. Uh, Postgres includes many kind of tools. You want to use them. You must configure your path. Okay. Easiest way is to, ex to configure your path is to execute the following commands. Why is that sudo? Don't forget to close the terminal. I don't want to do all that on... Make dir paths and echo all that sudo t. I forget what does t do. T till the copy standard input to standard output, making a copy in zero or more files. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Paths Postgres app. Don't forget to close the terminal. This is not a good idea at all. Tools provided by Postgres. Man pages. So we got this. No, all I want to do. Why are you doing that in sudo? That's super weird. I thought I'd put it in a library. These docs are all boogered. There's Postgres. Thirteen. Ben. There we go.
Whoa, they don't have PG in general, though. This is weird. PSQL? I don't know what the commands are. System provider tools. PSQL is a Postgres command line interface to your database. Okay, there we go. PSQL H localhost. P S Q L H localhost. Password. All right, hang on. I didn't set a password. <sighs> Could not translate host Postgres SQL. This is kind of a pain. Um, you getting it done? Nice. Uh, hang on a second. Let me see. Possibly. How to blur. Oh. I think is it. Yeah, this is it. I feel like it's just not connecting the database for some reason. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. So you mush it all down. Oh, I can't show that. Oops, crap. I just closed. Watch my thing. Ah, everything exploded. Hang on. Chat just went away. Where's my... I don't know how to get chat back out. Stand by. Oh, there we go. I think I got it. I broke chat. Or I made chat disappear. So if you're chatting right now, I can't see it. <laughs> uh, this. I've got it. I used to have a hotkey that made this show up, but like the Firefox window or the Chrome window or whatever would be huge. And I couldn't like resize it down. Stop. Pop out. There we go. There we go. Sweet. Okay. Uh, we're back in business. It's less broken now. Uh, okay. Postgres. So I didn't set a password. Postgres asking password Mac. I, I think I got to figure out what the username is for like the root user. So your username probably does not exist. The default username that's just with this Postgres. Okay. Post P S Q L. SQL user Postgres host localhost password user for Postgres. Hopefully, hey, we're in. Uh, okay, so now we got to figure out how to set up Postgres for Django. Um,
Post goes to create user. Oh, actually, the first thing I want to do is I want to put this. How do we get out of this? Exit? Yeah. So I want to put this on my path so that I can actually get to these things. Uh, so give me one second. I don't know if there's anything in my... I don't think there's anything in my path stuff that is work-related, but just in case. Um... Yeah, that, I, I really like that blur, right? Uh, where's my path get set up? Sorry, bear with me one second. I just want to, this will make it easier to deal with. Export path. <laughs> All right, so hopefully PSQL will work here. There we go. I don't have a username yet. All right, so now I just got to figure out how to set up. PSQL user Postgres host localhost. All right. Is there like Postgres web interface. It's like MySQL had that PostSQL clients. Postgres, whatever. PG admin. Oh, this is, I think, is what I'm looking for. Download. Oh, this is going to suck because I need to have that other thing running. Uh, binary format. Oh, actually, maybe not. Mac. Oh, please tell me this just works. works. It's been a while since I've admined a Postgres database. Because what I want to do is just set up... Well, I really kind of want to set up two users, because I, I want to set up... Um, a database for the prod Django, and then a database for the dev Django, so that I'm working in the same environments, basically, or in the, with the same set of tools. Installing the software. <sighs> yeah, this is funny because this is like one of those I got to get all the infrastructure set up before I can really kind of start doing stuff. Um, which is part of it, but not the most. Oh, I already had it. Well, that's funny. I'll just put in the new one. I thought I had Postgres on this machine. I don't know why. Oh, you know what? I bet I was using the wrong command. When I did PG, I should have just used PSQL. <laughs> Oops. So I probably have a couple different versions of Postgres on here. This, like, this machine is doing a great job considering how much I've messed with it. All right. Uh, I guess while we're doing that, let's bring up another one. 
Django deploy. See, yeah, I think I'm going to use this Goonicorn or whatever. Because I don't really want to set up Apache and like, I mean, they basically say like, don't serve this in production for real, but like, it's only on my machine, so fine. Um, Daphne, UV, whatever. Oh, you know what? Did I Django run Junicorn command? Serve static files now. Oh yeah, this is the the directions they give you say to run this command to fire up the server when this is the command that you need to run to fire up the server. That was like an hour, which is you know, blech. Where did my site finish deploying? Yay, it finished deploying. Whoops. I don't understand why that's taking so long. That's only a couple hundred mag. What's going on? Disk image helper is taking up 73% of the CPU, so that's probably part of it. This is concerning. Why is Python 3.9 running? Something's hung. I really need to re re the, reboot this machine. Like, it just did it the other day. Yeah, it's only been up for three days. Um, just did it the other day when it did its software update or whatever. Um, I guess I keep doing this. Uh, yeah, so how to deploy with WGS. So... Deployment checklist. The internet is hostile environment. True. Take some time to review your settings, security importance in mind. Django has many security features. Some are built in and always enabled. Others are optional. Others are optional because they aren't always appropriate. I read that sentence wrong. Have fun with the work. Oh, did you, you gotta like, I had to hit a weird key to make it do it. There was something funky about it. Like, I don't, I don't remember exactly what it was, but like, it was like control clicking or yeah, like it, it, I had to experiment a little bit. I don't know if Streamlabs maybe has something else firing off when I get it, but it was definitely weird. Well, okay, gotcha. Yeah, I, I missed that for like five minutes and I kept like trying it and it took me a while to figure it out. Uh, security features, for example, HTTPS may not be suitable. For Impractical for local development. Customizes following checklist may be appropriate. So run, manage, check, deploy. Some checks described below could be automated with check deploy. Be sure to run against your production settings. Secrets key. Or from a file. Okay, debug. You must never enable debug introduction. Allow hosts. Yeah. I mean, it's like I. The only time I really use it is if I am going to do something that like might flash a password or might do work stuff, um, and so far I've remembered to do it every time. I'm also nervous that like at some point I'm going to like throw some work document up there that's like you know for internal use only and get like yelled at. Um, hopefully not fired. Hopefully just yelled at. So there's a lot of those caches. If you're using a cache connection parameters databases. Database connection parameters are probably different in development than production. Database passwords are very sensitive. You should protect them exactly the secret key. For maximum security, make sure database servers only accept connections from your application servers. Yeah. 
If you haven't set up backups through your database it right now, yep. See, I think, I think this is almost as easy with what I'm doing as copying a bunch of files over. And then pointing, uh, pointing the thing at it. Um, but you know what I should do is I should actually make this a deployment script. So we'll do, we'll do infrastructure as code kind of, um, and just make a simple, simple deployment script. So the first thing I need to do is figure out where I'm going to put this. So I could just put it here under site. Because these are all production tools. Yeah, we're going to do this. Okay, so. Toolkit deployer. Well, actually, what's interesting is really what I want to have happen. Okay, this is going to get interesting. So I'm actually going to build the toolkit deployer inside toolkit. Yeah. <laughs> It's like eat your own dog food. Um, okay, so that's that's actually the first thing we can f build for real. Um, so, okay, I was trying to figure out if I wanted to do, so like in this directory structure, I could do like a tools thing and then have multiple tools underneath it. But really what I want to have is a direct like a uh, in Django terms an app or directory for each um, for each tool. So Python manage start app toolkit deployer. Hello. Everything's slow. Don't know why. So we should have toolkit deployer here when we oh, come back over here. Hello. Why is everything so slow? What's going on? That's okay. Well, it's the different computer. PyCharm is freaking out. Toolkit deployer. There we go. Uh, okay, so first thing we're gonna do is link it up so we can see it. Uh, so we got our config URLs. Toolkit deployer slash include toolkit deployer dot URLs doesn't exist, so it's going to yell at us. We also need a comma there. Toolkit deployer, new file, URLs, pi, from Django URLs, import path, URL patterns, equals path, so the home page of this is going to be 
views. Oh, we need to do this from dot import views. Index name equals index. And then we're going to call this app name tool. Whoops. I want that in quotes tool tool kit views deployer. I did name that right, right? Yeah. Toolkit deployer. Did I put that in the URLs right? Yes. Okay. Uh, so let's fire up the server. Yeah, definitely thought there might be something else still that we got to do. So in toolkit deployer, we need views and we've got to give it an index. Def index request. Actually, we don't need context for this. We're just going to return render request toolkit deployer index HTML. And now we got to build that template. Templates. Toolkit. Deployer. Index HTML. And block content. There we go. Con, C O N T E N T, T E N T. That took a long time to spell. In block content. Here is the content. So now, hopefully. Uh. 127, all that. So there's that. And this is actually gonna go in our list. So let's actually just do a test here. Um, so categories. Streamers, what's the name of this category to be? Um, tools. Links. Add link. Um, toolkit deployer. D E P L O Y E R. Go some tools. Save and add another. And then we're going to do toolkit admin. Admin. Yeah, we'll actually start using this. I'll have to redo all of those inside. Uh, the production database too, but that's cool. Like this is how this works. And so now if we actually go to the home page, hopefully, there you go. So toolkit deployer. Template does not exist. Toolkit deployer index HTML. I thought we just made that. Toolkit deployer. So I spelled something wrong somewhere. E P L Y E R. Oh wait, I think you do you have to uh, do you have to restart if you add new templates. Nope. I mean maybe, but that didn't seem to fix it. Toolkit 
toolkit, toolkit deployer, templates, dev temp. Why isn't it adding? Oh, 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 anyway, because we didn't add the app to settings as well. I forgot that. Here's the content. Sweet. Um. Now I just got to figure out how I want to do the deployment. Um. I guess I want to do it from Git, right? So Git deploy. Deployment commands, yeah. I, st I still haven't seen a better way to do it than this. Um, yeah, the, so this would be toolkit deployer. No, toolkit, just be toolkit. Um, see, refix, prefo, prefix. This doesn't look right anymore. Um, this note is from two, 2013. <laughs> Let me just see, get deploy. Get pull push. In this case, we have a clone of a repo. Let's start the app. We want to release a new version. We execute git pull, fetch the latest version. Release. Here we go. We pull a new version app right from the repo. All I need to do is add a proper remote to it. It's called production. Get push production master. Pros and cons of get deployment. Oh, this is actually just calling it like. Yeah, this isn't really. Deploy project to your server with Git. How to deploy Git. Uh, the goal, when you run Git push, deploy the latest master to there. Let's set it up. Server. This person knows how to draw. A post receive hook in there will check out the files into a work tree, a separate folder. We can customize post or fee, hook to do extra stuff, and solve blah, blah, blah. on your computer. Add the server as the remote. Then just just get push and off it goes. Create a bare repo on the server. Doesn't matter where it goes, as long as you have permission to write to it. Your home directory will work fine. Create the post hook. Get work tree. Deploy project. Get dir. 
check out F. Yeah, see, this is still... Hmm. So I'm trying to think, like, would you just... Uh, so another way to do this... But what I was thinking you could do, so I, I like that idea of having the post hook thing. So that could look for, as long as it worked on just the master branch. Three steps to configure the deployment process for, with Git hook. Three steps, configure deployment. So local computer, server, git hook, website. Create an empty group repo on the server. Write a git hook to deploy the code. Deploy from the computer to your own TLDR. Actually, the TLDR is up above. Um, on the remote server, copy the project create sh bash. Then create a new project. It configures a git repo and creates a git hook. On your local computer, add your server as a git called deploy. Push your code. Oh, that was a TLDR. I gotcha. It was the overview, then the TLDR. I gotcha. on the server to push to. <clears throat> okay, so we got that. At conventions dot dot set up permissions to get repo. Set the set GUI or set GID, whatever. Put in all the directories. Make the directory share, okay. Write the git hook to deploy the code. When you push the code to the server, we want to trigger a command to deploy the code from the git repo. To do so, we use a git hook, git post receive hook. Edit the file contents. So target the production directory, temporary directory for deployment, git repo. Make derp tempter checkout, do stuff like npm install. Replace the production directory with the temp directory. This is cool. Okay. Deploy from your local computer. Yeah. So. Really what I want to do is just, oh, but so that's. But you only want that to happen on master. All right, we're going to play with the git hook. I've never done this before. And so where did you put the git hook? Everybody does dot git with their apps names and stuff. I don't do that. Oh, so the first thing I want to see, so is that in, is that also in? No, it wouldn't be. I don't think it would be. I think the hooks probably deal with each other. I don't know. Let's go see what's happened. Um, git repo. 
Toolkit. Hooks. These are all samples. Post update, post pre push, prepared, whatever. Um, post receive. I also didn't know that you could do that. Do plus X and have it be executable across users, others, and global. That's super cool. Um, post receive. When was this written, actually? 2017. So post. what's the post receive hook? Twenty fourteen, twenty fifteen, twenty thirteen. That's all older stuff. Post commit. That's not what we did. We did post receive. It's funny to me that these aren't proc receive. Post receive. So execute one of the this hook executes once for receiving operation. It takes no arguments, but gets the same information as that. It supersedes post update and it gets both old and new values of all refs in addition to their names. Both standard output and standard error for to send pack. Default post receive focus empty. It receives get push, post update. Variable number of parameters, each of which is ref, blah, 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 post hook primary for notifications. It can't affect the outcome of coast receive pack. Post receive. Where did it say it gets the same information as pre-receive? What is pre-receive? Rock receive, update, pre-receive. Just before starting to update refs in the remote repository, the pre-receive hook is invoked. It's edge access determines sex or failure of the update. The hook executes once for the receiving operation, it takes no arguments, but each ref to be updated, it receives one standard input line. Old value, SP, new value, SP. With SP space, ref name. Where old value is the old object name in the reference, new value is the new object name. And the full name, okay. I just wanna learn about this a little bit more. Um, But so, post receive master only get. Writing post receive to deal with a specific branch. Gets its arguments from stand in in the form of old ref, ref name. Since these arguments are coming from stand in, not from the command line argument, you need to use read. Post receive hook, 
can receive multiple branches at once. For example, if someone doesn't get push all. Branch equals get rev parse symbolic abbreviation dust dust ref name. Okay. While read. Oh, I didn't know about this. So this is doing lines, I guess. I don't know. Um. Let's try this. Post receive. So if master Touch users, excuse me, LNS, desktop, get touch. Dot text, there's nothing actually gonna be in there. Um, get add dot, get commit. M start to add toolkit deployer and some other stuff. You get check out master get merge no fast forward dev. So this needs to come over here for a second. No, oh, actually that's not awful. Hang on, window rearranging going on over here. Maybe chat where I can see it better. So you couldn't see the command line there. I'm just realizing. Uh, so get push. I'm watching the side to see if I see the. Oh, yep, there it goes. I, mean, I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but I'm always kind of a little surprised when something new. You try something new and it actually works. It's just like, huh, cool. Um, actually, I want to do this. This will be helpful. <clears throat> okay, so whenever I push the master, I can just I can make that the deploy. To the to deploy the dev version of my local Django. Django site. Oh, I cannot spell today. Today. Um 
is how I'm setting up to deploy the dev version of my local Django site, Django tools site. I'm fading a little bit, I think. Whatever, all good, all good, all good. So where, how are the people actually, I think people are just, where is this one? So I don't like the cop, I don't like the remove. Work tree temp, get repo, get dura repo, check out F. What's check out F mean? Does that work? Oh, look at that. Thought those were the actual commands. Force, okay. When switching branches proceed, even if the index or the working tree differs from head. This is used to throw away local changes. When checking out paths for index. Do not fail upon when checking out paths from the index. Do not fail upon unmerged entries. Instead, unmerged entries are ignored. Okay. All right, I'm gonna finish this deployer. That's what's gonna happen. So, especially because if it's just a get push to master, then that's pretty awesome. This feels fraught, like it feels fraught somehow. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. so this is, all right, sorry, this is something else I wanna do. So, actually I've only got the master branch up there. This is fine, okay. So, in this directory, I just need to figure out like how I wanna do the deployment. Like where I wanna move stuff to basically. So I could do this same thing and just kind of hard code some stuff. I think I'm gonna do that. Like it's still feel, like I'm always freaked out with you know RMRF on a script because like if you if the path if something weird happens with the pathing, all of a sudden things can go deadly. set this up so that that can happen automatically.
Get remote add deploy, blah, blah, blah. Initialize the repo and add the server's remote. Yeah. I've already done a clone, so it's already up there. Um, so... Again, I'm, so I'm just stuck on where I want to do this, but I'm just going to do it, right? We'll just make a thing happen. Um, it's fine. So toolkit, site. Oops, PWC. So make dir p, because I actually am going to delete this directory. Get working tree. Oh, I guess it is. Yeah, so since I am using it twice, we're going to do that twice. That's fine. Yeah, okay, we'll just, I like it. We're gonna do it. Take the little thing. Yeah, it's cool, whatever, it's fine. the content to the temp directory. Run any other changes you need here. CD slash. See, that makes me paranoid cd slash armor of target but like if you're at slash and target somehow matches something weird or something funky that's like that's scary yeah this armor of target i don't like it either Because can't you do CP R? Temp target. Wouldn't that work? There's going to be a directory thing happening here, maybe. But if this works, it works. Um, So there's our temp directory. Here's our site directory. Here's our repo. I'm not going to delete the temp directory right now. Like they're just moving it. I'm going to delete it, but I want to see this go first. So
Yeah, this is cool. Uh, like, I kind of been anxious about getting this set up for a while. I mean, anxious about like actually doing it. I'm just gonna back out all this stuff. So, dev toolkit. I should actually call them deployers. That should be the name of the app. And then have the deployers in there. That makes a lot more sense. So why don't we just go ahead and make deployers? Um, Python manage start app deployers. And then we're going to delete toolkit deployer. Actually, let's, let's go ahead and add deployers while we're here. And we'll actually make a thing. Deployers. And then links. Path. Deployers. Include. Deployers URLs. We're gonna get rid of toolkit deployer. Delete. Gotta make a URLs file. Oh, from Django URLs import path from dot import views. App name deployers URL patterns. See, remember, this is funny. Like, I'm doing this like a lot of tutorials do it. Like, just do all this stuff. But like, once you know how to do it, sure. But like, as you're first learning it, not so much. So path, start, view, index, name equals index. And then our views, create our view, def index, Request, return, render, request, deployers, index HTML. Actually, I'm gonna leave that on one line. Go back and forth on that. And then deployers, we need templates. Deployers, index HTML. Extends base HTML. Block content. In block content. I actually have some hotkeys for that. Oh well. Uh, deployers. All right. Did I hear everything? Let's see, we got everything. Python on server. Nope. 
view is not defined. Oh, we missed one. So it should be views. Oh, I missed it by one. All right, let's actually, let's go to the admin here. We'll do this. Links. Toolkit deployer. Deployers. Deployers. Save. I like that that's responsive. View site. Deployers. There's our deployers. Nice. I'm getting excited about that. That was pretty good. The whole, like, editing the links and doing the links right there, that's pretty good. So I'm not going to, I'm going to, that'll be the first button I make is to do the deployment there. Um, for now, uh, do this. That's what I'm looking for. Nope. Add deployers, remove deployers, remove toolkit deployer. Get checkout master, get merge, no. Fast forward dev. All right. So here's toolkit. Here, we're gonna do two things. We're gonna do three things. Thing one, thing two. So this is temp deploy which let's actually delete that so that should show up here toolkit site should start getting stuff in it and then the third thing we'll do is just size this over so we can actually see what's happening get push ah it copied temp deploy that's what I thought was going to happen yeah it copied temp deploy in Now the question is, that's cool though. That's super cool. That's really cool. Now the question is if I just do get push again without having anything to change, no, everything's up to date. So there has to be a change to make it happen. Um, All right, so that's what I thought might happen. So you gotta do, I think that'll do it right there. But I'm just like, I'm wondering like, If we actually do that up here, here, wherever. That, like, this should be fine. This should be fine. Here, let's just try this. I think that'll all work. Okay, so. We've got all this stuff cleared. 
So nothing's up there and nothing's in sight. So we're on dev, get, check out dev. Uh, Vim, read me. D-P-L-O-Y deployment happens automatically with each push to master. No. Get add dot, get commit m, update readme. Get check out master, get push. Oh, get merge, no fast forward dev. Now get push. There it is. That is pretty cool. Because now I can wire that up as actually a button to do all that stuff. Like, even from the dev branch, like I can just be in dev, click it up, hit go, have it go through and do all the magic. And then toolkit site oh virtual environment toolkit ah it passed over the directory that might be fine but Yeah, actually, it will be, uh, no, that'll be fine because we want the packages to be the same. So the packages will be the same. Like it's, that'll call the same thing, um, right? Django admin should be a thing, right? Yep. I don't know what all that big warning is. But if we do Django G U N I C O R N running Django or running the Unicorn command. That was not there a minute ago. Like that was one of those weird things, right? Yeah. Oh. Grant exists in these Python versions. Do that. Oops. Hang on. That. Booting worker with PID, whatever. Is that already running? What port are we on? Listening on 8000.
No such thing, links category. Oh, the database hasn't been migrated. Uh, all right, so let's do this. Well, so it's weird because I don't have, like this isn't, this is in a version control thing, but it's not in version control, right? Um, all right, I'm gonna leave this here for now. I'm gonna go ahead and tap it for a minute uh, or for a while. Uh, I'll be back later tonight. It's five o'clock, probably eight o'clock, something around there. Um, and then we'll, we'll keep going. But this, uh, I think this is good for now. I like where this is at. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So see you later. Have a good one. Talk to you soon. Bye.